All right, hey guys, so what I'm gonna be showing you how to do today is transform any random object into an Andy Warhol inspired pop art piece. All right, so the techniques that we're gonna be using are clipping masks, um, selective editing, hue saturation, and we're gonna be making sure to use basically all of our selection tools, right? We're gonna focus on the object selection tool as well as the quick selection tools, right? So first steps first, this is exactly what I had my students do in class. Um, this is actually one of their pictures. So um, Mauricio, thank you, all right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we have to isolate the can from the background. Now I did use a really simple looking background for this exact reason. Um, I didn't want to have to compete with anything when I was actually trying to erase the background. So uh, I'm gonna have a really easy time. If you have a really, really busy background, you might not have as easy of a time as I will. All right, so I'm gonna take my object selection tool, draw a quick square or rectangle around my can. You can see that I did a really good job actually. Um, and I'm just gonna click on my layer mask tool over here. All right, now what that's gonna do is it's just going to erase that background for me. These are all non-destructive edits that I'm going to do, right? Which is uh, simply just means that we can always undo what we did, right? We don't want to do any destructive editing in Photoshop because it's such a powerful resource. And why would you want to just get rid of your things, right? Why would you want to get rid of information that you worked so hard to create in the first place? Um, and this way, you know, if I close out of my program now and open it up in a week from now, I can still go back a few steps, right? If I decide that I hate my background color, I can change it. So now we have our regular Publix whole kernel golden sweet corn. Um, next step I'm going to do is actually convert this into a smart object because I'm going to be adding a filter to it. So um, a couple of different ways to do this. You can just right click on the layer itself and you can convert to a smart object. Or if you're not a fan of the right clicking, I know that uh, for Mac sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. So we can go into filter and convert for smart filters. All right, same effect. Either way, you're converting it into a smart object. So after that, I'm gonna go into filter, filter gallery. And that is really big, hold on. Okay. All right, I think it's just my computer acting up right now, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, however, I know I'm gonna use cutout, all right? I really like the way that cutout looks for this Andy Warhol inspired piece. Um, depending on what it is that you're doing though, or what picture you're using, you're gonna to have to change the number of levels here to really get it to look the way that you want. Um, I'm gonna go for, I think, I think four is good for me. Oh no, I want that L. Let's see what it looked like with three. Yeah, we're gonna stick with three, all right? Um, go ahead, play around with the edge simplicity, right? You can see exactly what it does there. If you take a look at the top of the can, the simpler you go, the really the less definition you have. Whereas if you go all the way down to the one, you can really almost even read the letter, uh, the letters up top. All right, so we're gonna go maybe to a four, keep it in between. Um, edge fidelity, I'm gonna leave exactly as it is. So now we have a really retro little inspired can of corn. Um, so the reason why we do this with a smart filter is because you can just toggle that eye on and off, right? The visibility. And you can always go back to the original. <coughs> In fact, something that people don't know is if you just double click on the smart object itself, it'll open up your original picture. So for instance, if I actually didn't want to erase the background, I could just disable my layer mask and it's still there. All right, now, I'm not gonna save those changes because I want this to look like this. Had I changed this, had I saved the changes, then I would have had my background back in this particular photo. Right. So what we wanna do to make Andy Warhol inspired art is we wanna be able to change the colors of, for instance, the top of this can, um, the word golden, right? The P for Publix, the pieces of corn, and also change the background color. And we're gonna eventually composite it all onto a grid system um, and have them all show up at the same time, all right? So first things first, I'm actually gonna use my um, object selection tool right here. 
and I'm going to select just the top of this can. So I'm going to draw a box around the top of this can and it see that it actually selected the P here as well as the piece of the can underneath. All I want though is that little purple top of the can section. So I'm going to zoom in. I just press Z on my keyboard. All right, wherever you put your mouse, wherever you put your cursor is where it's actually going to default going into zoom in and out. After this, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my quick selection tool and make sure that you click on minus up here. All right, um, and let's go ahead and get rid of everything that I don't want included in this. All right, you can see that it will auto adjust. Photoshop is great at that. All right, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard as shortcuts for making your paintbrush or whatever tool that you're using smaller or larger. Right? I want none of this, so I'm getting rid of all of that. I'm not going to be perfect here. Um, I really don't mind. You, know, you can see that I went too far. I'm just going to control Z and just very slowly just do one click at a time so I can have a little bit more control because if I try to use my cursor the way that I was before. I want to be able to get all this. All right, that's good enough for me. Uh, make sure up here. No. Nope. All right. We are good to go. So from here, I'm not going to press anything else on my toolbar over here. What I am going to do though, is I'm going to go down here to my adjustment layers over here. All right. These are my adjustments that I can make. These are again, non-destructive and I'm going to choose hue saturation. So as soon as I do that, if I click on this right here, I can change the hue saturation, right? Of that particular piece. Right, you can make it more saturated, less saturated, right? I'm actually gonna keep it a little bit more saturated because that's more in the art style of pop art. So, <coughs> excuse me, next up, click on my picture again over here, layer zero, go back to my object selection tool, right? And technically I didn't have to click back over here because I had sample all layers selected, um, but it's just good practice, or especially if you're beginning. All right, so this time I'm only gonna change the P. So I'm gonna draw a box around my P over here, right? And it got more than I wanted it to. So we're just gonna go quick select again with the minus, and once again, get rid of everything that I don't want included. Perfect, all right? That was actually already not included. I just hadn't noticed. So again, same exact thing. I'm gonna go over here to my adjustments, hue saturation, all right? And you can change that. Now notice that this is really, really small changes compared to the one above, right? Um, and that's because we, um, huge hue saturation changes and adjustments don't actually work very well on white and black. So if we want this to be really vibrant, I'm actually going to control Z my way back until I'm still here. And I also did notice while I was doing that, that I forgot the center of that piece. So I'm just going to bring it right back in there. All right. So what we can do instead is I'm actually going to do an adjustment layer of a solid color. All right. I'll bring that over here so you can see it. And I'm gonna change it to any color, it doesn't matter, because we're gonna be modifying this later anyways. All right, I'm gonna press okay. So now this color is only being affected on that P, right? So when I go ahead and do the same thing, um, and we're gonna add our adjustments, so I'm gonna adjustment layer, and I'm gonna do this time a hue saturation and apply a clipping mask to it. So just press Alt on the keyboard, all right? and hover in between the two layers, and that creates a clipping mask, right? Or I can right click, and I can create a clipping mask that way. And what clipping masks do in this situation is that this hue saturation, even though I didn't create another layer mask for it, right? And it's only going to apply to that P. So take a look, that's what that looks like, right? Had I not included the layer mask, I mean, had I not included, included the clipping mask, I apologize, Right, that's what that would look like, right? Affecting everything. Whereas again, with the clipping mask, it's only that, right? Really useful to know. Um, clipping masks are fantastic and it just saves you time. All right, so next up, 
we have, let's just do this little golden corn and then I'm gonna do the corn. I'm gonna call it done, all right, for our adjustments. So again, click here, go onto my object select tool, right? Select all of my corn. All right, that did a pretty decent job actually. I'm gonna go ahead again, adjustments, hue saturation, and let's do that one, leave it green. Once again, click on layer zero, right? And only the word golden. You can do more, I'm gonna stop here. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I woke up with a cold. So here, like once again, you're used to this by now, right? So pretty good. Right. Now, those of you who know the style of Andy Warhol, you're probably thinking that's great and all, but where's our background? And you're right. So let's zoom out. Right. This is what this looks like so far. And it's a far cry from Andy Warhol, mostly because it's plain. We need a background. Right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to drag it down so it's below everything. This is going to be, let me show you actually, a larger view of our layers panel so you can really see what this looks like. And our new layer one is gonna be our background, all right? Now we've already removed the background from our can of corn, so as soon as I throw on a color here, you'll be able to see it behind the can of corn. Uh, however, we don't wanna use our paint bucket tool for that simply because this is easier. All right, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I go adjustment layer, solid color, and let's just choose whatever color at this point. Here's a green. Oh, that's really terrible. Yeah, that's better. All right. Um, because I did it this way, a couple of different things. Um, one, there is actually a layer mask. So if I did want to show something, right, I can just write on my layer mask and the clear black round will show up, which is great if maybe you wanted to add two colors to your background. So for instance, if I wanted to do something like this, Right, and this way, everywhere that you did anything, that would show up. Okay. Um, and the second reason is because you can actually change these colors extremely easily just by double clicking here, changing your new color and selecting your new color, right? And that works for everything. But I actually don't want this here. That was just an example, so let me delete that for you. Um, I don't want anything there, so I'm going to delete my layer mask. I don't need it. If we want it, you can just put another one right here. All right. Um, I don't like that color for what we have going on. There, this teal's pretty good. All right, so all we really need to do now is crop. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use my crop tool right here. Now, delete cropped pixels is checked by default. Uncheck that. Remember, we work non-destructively. Right. So because that delete cropped pixels is off, all of this extraness, this extra extraness, I swear to God, all of this extra part back here. Right. It's still going to be there after I save it and I open this up in a week or two. So if I decide that for some reason I want this to be bigger than it is right now. Right. It'll still be there. So I can just change the crop value later. If you leave that actually um, checked to delete the cropped pixels, there's no going back after you've press saved and closed out of Photoshop, all right? So go ahead and press the check mark to commit. And there we go. So I'm actually going to go ahead and save, hold on, let me change that green, that's really bothering me. Um, little hint, if you just toggle the, um, the little eye, eyeballs, the visibility toggles, you can know actually which one that you're modifying a lot easier. So I do like the look of yellow. I just want it to look different. So there, that like golden. So now I'm gonna do file, save as. All right, let's save onto my computer. Um, notice I do a lot for work. And let's call this corn one, okay? Uh, now we're gonna just change a couple more things. So I'm gonna start from top to bottom and change the whole thing, all right? so. Here's one change. I'm not even looking. I don't know if this is going to look good or not. I'm not paying attention. Okay. I'm leaving that color fill alone and I'm only changing the hue saturations. All right. So that's good enough for right now. File, save as. All right. This is what I'm looking at, by the way. All right. Save on your computer. Let's change this to corn two. All 
right? Do this a couple more times. All right, and I will come back after I finish doing six of these, all right? So I'll see you soon. All right, so this is gonna be my sixth one that I'm about to do. Um, let me just start doing this right now. The reason why I'm showing you this last one is because I actually realized in the first two that I forgot to show you how to change that background color again. Now, I know I've previously done it, but just for the sake of continuity, I'm gonna do it again. All right, now go ahead and change that up. All right, just double click. And then from here, you'll be able to choose whatever color you want. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead, file, save as, and make this number six. Okay. So now let's compile them, right? Because as you may or may not know, Andy Warhol really did grids, right? Uh, he usually did like six, but we're gonna do, I mean, he did eight, but we're gonna do six just because I don't wanna do that many. So file new, all right? And we're gonna go into print, letter, and orientation. Make sure that you switch that to landscape and just hit create. Um, and we're going to go file place because and place embedded. All right. Um, you can do either one. I prefer pay click place embedded for this particular case. Now, unfortunately, you do have to do this one at a time. Um, if anyone knows how to do this more than one at a time, please let me know because I do not. All right. So just go one at a time. File place embedded. Corn two place check mark. That check mark, by the way, um, is really important. If you notice that you're kind of stuck, right? It's going to be that check mark. So don't worry about that if you kind of get stuck. Right. You must remember to click that check mark, otherwise, um, you won't really get very far. So file, place embedded once again. Forgot what number one. I think that was four. So let's go for five. File, place embedded. It's a bit tedious after a while, which is another reason why I'm only doing six. So let's take a look. One, two, look, they're right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm actually gonna select all of them. Shift, click, first and last. And that way I can resize them at the same time. All right, just make sure that you press shift while you're doing it. That way it constrains your proportions and you don't end up with lopsided looking cans. All right, so now they're all the same exact size. So what I'm gonna do is let's just rearrange them.
Now I'm just making sure, hold on. Oh, see there's too many greens, um, but it is what it is. Let's just try to rearrange these so that they're at least a tiny bit staggered. Not ideal, but I'm not about to redo it. Actually, you know, let my mistake be your benefit. So let's say that you did mess up, right? Well, I've embedded these files, um, which means that you see how over here, these are all smart objects, right? So let's say that I wanted to change background color for this first corn, right? All I gotta do is actually just double click on this and my original will show up, which means that I can just click here and change that color. Now I do have one of those already, so let's just, I hate this color, but I'm just gonna go with it, right? And as soon as I X out of it, it's gonna ask me to save, go ahead and say yes. And that way it automatically updates here. All right, I'm gonna leave this one green and let's change this one. Double click right over here, click on the corn and go for a darker green. There you go, click yes. And there we are, all right? So this is pretty much all you have to do. Afterwards, we're gonna come in, crop again, make sure that delete cropped pixels is not clicked, right? Um, and you're just gonna crop it in. I feel free to arrange this a little bit better because I kind of left some white space there. But other than that, we're good to go. The comment that is really bothering me actually. Better. All right, so I would just save this as a PSD so I can go back and preserve these layers, right? So file, PSD, save as on my computer and corn final, right? Um, and then from there, I can also do file export, quick export as PNG if I just wanted to share with somebody that doesn't need to edit anything that I've done any further. All right, so hopefully you guys found that instructive. Um, it's a really nice project to do, especially if um, you're in school, right? If you want to teach people really simple, easy ways to um, get to know the selection tools in Photoshop and the adjustment um, properties, right, that it has. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day. All right, and I'll see you later.